Welcome to the only beginner guide which you need to watch to understand Mobile Legends Bang Bang. As the game increases in popularity, many new players wanna learn this game. And like other MOBAs, ML can be really overwhelming sometimes. So I hope this beginner guide will help you. Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video let's get back to the basics of the game. If you are a beginner, then this video will simplify all the overwhelming concepts of this game. In this video, you are gonna learn the following things. Map, a detailed analysis of its map and how it works. Objectives, what you need to do to win the game. Roles, the roles you are gonna play which dictate your lineup and team fight contribution. Laning, where you should go on the map according to your role. How to take fights. How to fight or should you fight against your enemy in the same lane? Remember, it's not always about meaningless brawl. How to farm. How to get your items and get stronger. How to itemize. What to build according to your hero and role. And heroes for beginners. Best heroes to start your journey with. Let's head on to the first topic, which is map. There are three maps in this game, which are Western Expense, Imperial Sanctuary, and Sanctum Island. We recommend you to start at Sanctum Island as it is the latest and best quality one. But please feel free to explore other maps as well as they look very different from each other. All the maps are different and unique in their own way. Now let's head on to the layout of the map. The map of ML is divided into three lanes, like this, which is called EXP, Gold and Mid. In the center, there is a part intersecting the mid lane called the river, because it is actually a river, which flows when a turtle spawns and increases your movement speed. Now, as you can see, there are four sections between the intersection of the river and mid lane. This place is called Jungle. That's where you can find most of the creeps, which provided you with some benefits more on it later. In each lane, there are three turrets which are called the outer turret, inner turret and inhibitor, which leads to base and nexus. This is the enemy nexus and this is our. So in short, this map is divided into two parts, red and blue. This side is ours and that side is for the enemies. If you have ever played any MOBA before, it won't be that complicated for you since almost all of the MOBAs uses the same map layout. Next, we have the objectives of the game. How will you win? What actually do you do to win? The objective of this game is pretty simple, which is to destroy the enemy base. It's just a matter of fact, how would you do that? Basically, after the game starts, you have to go to your lane or jungle and farm gold which helps you to buy items which make you stronger, faster and more durable. As the game progresses, you have to get stronger than your enemy and kill them then destroy the turrets. You can earn gold from various sources, for example, killing enemies, killing buffs, killing minions or even from an item called Roam, which we will cover further in this video. Now let's examine each section of the map briefly. The mid lane is the closest path towards the enemy base as it is in the center. Usually the lane assigned to mage for various reasons such as A as it is in the center, it is also the closest from other lanes and jungle. So you can either help your side laners by ganking or help your jungler if the enemy invades jungle. B, since mid is the center of the map, you can get gangs from all around the map. Mages are squishy and easy to kill, so being so close to the tower can save them from early gang. Top is the lane where we can face most gangs from your enemies if we assume the gold lane was assigned there, because blue buff is located here in the map. And most of the jungle patterns are like this, so around one and a half minutes is the time frame where you can face your first gangs from enemy junglers. If you are a gold laner assigned to this lane, you need to be extra careful. As for the boat, assuming it's an experienced lane, you won't get many gangs aside from the first few minutes because the first turtles spawn in this lane. So you will have to be self-sufficient. The jungle role is the least popular role among the newbies. 
where in fact it ain't that difficult to play as. Basically, instead of going to the lane, you have to go to the jungle and can farm by killing creeps or jungle monsters. Remember, if you decided to play as a jungler, always take the spell called Retribution. It is impossible to play as a jungler without this spell. So that's the role you roaming around, killing the creeps and gank your enemies, hoping to get some kills. After the latest changes when the turtle spawns, the river start flowing, which increases the movement speed towards the flow of the river, allowing your teammates other side of the map to get there quickly and help contest the turtle. But how to jungle properly might be a bit complicated as your early game rotation is very important. Because most of the junglers are the one who carries early game. So I would recommend you to watch this video to get the basic idea of how to farm and rotate in the most efficient way possible. Next, you need to understand the roles that you will be playing. There are six roles in the game and which you can play and explore. These are Marksman, Tank, Fighter, Assassin, Mage, and Support. Let's go by it one by one. As a Marksman, you are main source of damage of your team. It is your responsibility to carry your team in the late game as that is when you truly bloom. You are generally long range which helps you to stay out of the enemy's hand which should be the case because you will be their main target. You are the last person who should die in a team fight because of that your position need to be exceptionally well. You need to know when to fight or when to avoid. As for the lane, the best lane for you is gold lane which, as the name suggests, provide you more gold than any other lane, which helps you purchase your items, which are main source of your damage. If you want a detailed guide on how to play gold lane, watch this video. If you want to master this role, you have to be perfect, and then this video will help you to reach that level of perfection. As a tank, you will acquire the role of a roam, who will, as the name suggests, roam around the map, helping your allies. You should be the leader of your team as it should be you who decide where to go or whether to fight or not to fight. Aside from that, your job is to protect your damage dealer. You generally have tons of CC also known as crowd control skills which you can use on your enemies so that it will be easier for your damage dealer to kill them. A move like this is called a setup. A good setup can make or break the team fight or eventually the entire game. As a roam, you also are the most selfless player on your team as you have to be first person to die if it means your team lives. If you wanna see an in-depth guide on how to rotate, watch this video. A good roam is truly the backbone of your team. This video will help you to achieve that level of skill with the best graphical representation on the market. A fighter is like a jack of all trades, master of none. You can sustain relatively well as well as deal decent damage. You will be in front of team fight along with your roam and sustain and deal damage. You might generally not have the best damage, sustain or crowd control but your role is important in its own way as it is your responsibility to zone out the enemy and sustain with your tank. These are the some micro advantages which help your team win in the long term. Having an EXP laner or fighter in a team fight most of the time makes or breaks the team fight. EXP lane is also the most versatile lane wherein the fighter has a little bit of responsibility of each and every role. You will usually go to the EXP lane where generally you will get the least rotation and gain from your team. That's why you will have to be self-sustained. Otherwise, sometimes some fighters can go to jungle as well. And again, if you want to master this role, you can check out this video where I explained every step to take for maximum advantage. An assassin's job is to kill their damage dealer. You have skills which let you get in and out quickly which will complement your playstyle which is to kill their squishy damage dealer. Assassin are strong from the early game so you will have to take advantage to that. 
because you start falling off late game it is also the role which is hardest to master as the most of the assassins are really hard to play but if you master it you kill your target before they can process what happened to them most of the time you will go to jungle why so that you can rotate around killing here and there also while killing creeps and jungle monsters jungle typically gives less gold compared to minions so you will have to balance between farming and getting kills as it provides most gold there are lot more in jungle role for example what each jungler creep does and how much gold you get from them compared to minions stay tuned in this video for that mage are called roam without the roaming item as your job is to assist your tank whether it is ganking or supporting in team fight they have extremely high burst damage which can change the direction of a team fight they deal magic damage which counterbalance the physical damage dealer as a mage you will go to the mid lane because it is in the center you will have an easier time ganking on other lanes and helping them you are very squishy and once you use all of your skills you might have to retreat as for the most of the mages their damage come from their skills but that just a one trade off for your overwhelming power just remember to always gank with your roam and provide assistance to your damage dealer i would suggest you this video if you want to improve your mid lane gameplay and at last but not least we have support supports are much like a tank are the one you pick to roam in a normal team composition you generally either pick tank or support for roaming role so what's make it different from tank Supports aren't that durable compared to tanks. You don't do godly setup and usually don't have any hard CC. What you do is, as the name suggests, support your ally either by healing them, providing shield, or any other way depending on the heroes you are playing. How to take fights or trades? The main objective at the start of the game is to get more gold and purchase your item. You can get a gold advantage by killing your enemies or making them so low that they have to recall to the base leading to a gold advantage. Depending on your matchup, your item and your spell, you might either win or lose the trade. Some heroes are weak in the early game compared to their matchup. In those cases, I would suggest you don't take head on fights. but you don't have to worry about that this is something which comes naturally as you play more and more games another thing is when you should take fights in most of the cases you should take fight considering equal stages only if either you have a gold lead or you have exp lead in gold lead you might have more items than your counterpart so naturally you would be much stronger Here you are behind in EXP but you have a huge lead in gold. Let's see how it goes. That didn't go well. That's because some heroes can be much stronger in the early game even with an item gap. They can still defeat you one versus one. As you play more and more games, you automatically know if the hero you are facing is stronger than you or weaker than you. As for the level difference, it only matters in the early game as that is when you unlock your skills. If the enemy you are encountering is level 2 and you are level 1, you most definitely should not take fight as they will have an extra skill. Same goes if the enemy is level 4 and you are level 3. At level 4, he will unlock ultimate, which is the strongest skill in our arsenal. How to farm? One of the most important things to know in the laning phase is how to farm gold. You can earn gold in any of these ways. Killing minions killing jungle creeps killing enemies and destroying turrets killing minions and creeps are the most common way you can earn gold even though you get much more gold when killing enemies and destroying so you might be thinking on focusing on kills but almost any player will tell you don't go after kills over farming minions 
That's because killing the enemy is a risky and uncertain task. It might not go as you planned and get killed instead. For the first 5 minutes, the waves give you around 200 gold depending on the lane. Gold lane gives you 45% more gold than other lanes. Killing an enemy will also give you around 200 gold, so the risk isn't much worth taking. You will eventually get kills as you get more farm and purchase more items. Which leads to our next point, which is how to itemize. If you tap here, you will be open the store. What item you need depends on the hero you are playing. It might be either a physical or a magical hero. So you have to build from a respective category. This is overwhelming, I know. So you don't have to learn any of it right now. It is much simpler than you think. When you close your store, you see items hanging over there. These are your recommended items. Let's go to simple mode. You can see it here and even change it. These are the items which are most of the time correct. As now you know how to itemize and make your hero stronger, it's good time to suggest you some good heroes to start with. In the beginning, you don't get lots of options, so I will only recommend heroes which are available from the beginning and are extremely cheap. What hero you are actually going to main will take time. There is no way that you will pick a hero and main it instantaneously. With that being said, the first hero that you should start with from the marksman is Clint. You can purchase him in 15,000 BP, which seems like a lot for the beginners, but it's very much worth it. Clint is the extremely powerful marksman from the beginning, which will help you win those early trades. Beginners usually don't know about other heroes' skills, so they won't be able to counter him. Your first skill is your primary source of damage, so level it up. You can build the recommended build or can try this build. Another hero from this role is going to be Layla. Everyone's go to beginner's hero. But playing her, you need to be careful as she doesn't have any dash skill. But the damage she does in the late game is actually insane. Aside from that, she has the longest range of basic attack. Longer than any hero in the game. Just build her the recommended build, play safe in the early game and watch your enemies melting in front of your eyes. This is recommended build and emblem from us. In fighter, I would suggest is Balman. Balman is a strong early game hero which doesn't take much practice to master. You can get him in just 6.5k. You spam your second skill and stay out of turret range and you should be winning most of the battles because of the fact that he's fairly strong in the 1 vs 1 and also very affordable for beginners. It is a valid option. Here's the build and emblem. Next fighter you should play as the beginner is Hilda. Another strong hero with a unique passive. Hilda is a really strong early game hero. Her second skill will let you do crazy damage and her passive will let you heal in the bush. Just wait for your enemies to come and once come, demolish them with your second skill. This is the build and emblem which will help you to do so. Next we have mage, for that you should go for Eudora. She is actually a really popular pick against newbie. You will just have to use your second skill to stun them. Following that your ultimate and the first skill and by the end of it your enemy should completely be erased except the tank. Just remember to focus on squishy targets and make distance from the enemy as you don't have the longest range. The next recommendation for mage role is good. You will have a long range. Use that to bully and poke your enemies. Just practice a bit to land your stun and aim your ultimate. This is how his ultimate works. Just use your joystick to change the direction. Goat is again the hero who isn't very mobile, so keep making distance from your enemy, especially if they have an assassin. Next, we have assassins. As a beginner, I won't suggest you to play assassin as it is the hero which takes the most practice. But if you had to pick, go for Saber. It is one of the easiest assassins to master even for a beginner. With this role, I would suggest you to go jungle, that way you can roam around and get a kill here and there. 
Here is the basic combo. Just use your first skill and then your ultimate and that should be enough to one shot most of the enemies. Except the tank. But still, always try to target their marksman or mage. Next is Zilong. Zilong is not the best hero to pick, he's quite weak to be honest. But you can make it work in beginner Zilo. You have high mobility, decent damage and take down turrets fast. Just wait for the mid to late game before taking any fights. Finally for roamers, the best option you have is Tigril. He's tanky and has crowd control. If you master him, then you can use him in any rank since he always a good pick no matter where. With one good setup, you can change the flow of the battle. And for last, let's go for a support. It should be none other than Rafaela. She is also a really good pick, no matter which rank you play her at. She can heal, increase movement speed and also can provide vision. Just don't play support like a tank, only pick her if your team has someone who can take tons of damage. Remember, you can't support anyone if all of them are already dead. So this is it guys, a complete beginner guide. If you watch this video all the way through the end, you won't need any other guide in this matter. Now you are ready to start your ML journey. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. That will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.